<laughs> hey, they was longer. It was 24 hours. 11 a.m., be there. You won't want to miss it. Organize for revolution, forward ever, backwards never. We're not going to ask for housing. We're going to take it. Stay strong. 35%. There are over 833 families with children that experience homelessness on every given night in Portland. And there are far too few services and streams of affordable housing to make sure that each of these families is safe and secure every night. Our organization keeps a wait list of families that want to get into shelter that is consistently between 20 and 30 families long. Last winter at our family emergency winter shelter, our capacity was 60 people per night, but almost every single night throughout the winter we saw people of numbers of 90 to 100. And, mo and all of those people were members of families with children experiencing homelessness. The situation of families who are homeless is an increasingly dire situation because these are families that have small children that are being forced to miss meals, sleep in unsafe conditions, and lack the stability that children need to thrive. The increase in Multnomah County's homeless population can be attributed to the unprecedented economic challenges that we have faced in our region and nationally over the past few years. The Portland Metro region has been among the worst hit by the recession, with record unemployment rates and per capita incomes that trail the national average. Unemployment is one of the primary reasons for family homelessness, and the recession has made it harder to find and retain adequate work. Despite declining incomes, the cost of housing in the region has increased in recent years, making it more difficult for low-income residents to afford market rate rent. According to a recently released national report, a minimum wage worker in Montgomery County would need to work 82 hours per week or earn $17.40 an hour in a full-time job to afford a two-bedroom apartment in Portland. 49% of Multnomah County's renter households pay more than 30% of their gross income towards rent, mortgage, and utilities. Any crisis, from a medical emergency to job loss, can put a household with this level of rent burden at risk of homelessness. The high housing costs also make it extremely difficult for households already experiencing homelessness to transition off the street. At Portland Homeless Family Solutions, we accomplish our mission by operating two shelters, the Goose Hollow Family Shelter and the 13 Family Family Center. We house eight families experiencing homelessness each night, and we teach life skills classes like parenting, healthy relationships, rent well, budgeting, and many others. Additionally, each of our families works with a housing specialist to try to find permanent housing to create self-sufficiency and guide them to true sustainability. Over the past year, we have helped 88% of the families that walk through our door move into permanent housing. We house more than one family per week, and we have we make sure that over 300 members of families with children have safe, secure places to sleep each night. Cameron Lake has been volunteering at our shelter for over four years, and we are so proud of the work that he has been doing over the past year and the message that he brings to our community. I want to encourage all of you to consider volunteering at one of the local family shelters or donating coats, money, clothing, and bedding. Also, learn more about the issues of homelessness and affordable housing. It truly takes a village to help our society's most vulnerable citizens. And it's going to take work from each and every single person at this rally, as well as from the larger community as a whole. I challenge each of you to use Cameron Hunger Strike as inspiration in your own lives to bring the issues of homelessness and affordable housing to the forefront of our community. Talk about these issues with your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors, and your relatives. Call your legislators on the local and national level and encourage them to advocate on behalf of more affordable housing and money to support our local safety net program. Our city is experiencing a crisis right now by letting our most vulnerable citizens fall through the cracks. Let's put an end to this injustice by pooling our collective resources and our voices and making it known that we will not stand for homelessness in Portland. Except for the very rich people from all walks of life are losing their job, losing their home, losing their hope. It's happening in every state of our union, 
and it's happening here in Portland. Cameron has been out in front of City Hall for 50 days, withstanding the elements and refusing food in order to draw attention to this crisis we all feel. Some say that Cameron is a fool. He's being unreasonable by expecting to change city policies by undergoing this fast. And to this I say, yes, it may indeed be unreasonable, but it is absolutely necessary. Why is it necessary? Because the issues we're facing are much bigger than Cameron Whitman. The issues we are facing are much bigger than Portland, or Oregon, or even the USA. What do I mean? Let me answer that with a key question. Is it reasonable that all our good jobs are being outsourced to other countries? Is it reasonable that the few jobs that remain are the low-paying ones? Is it reasonable that our small and local businesses are being undercut by big box stores? What about this? Is it reasonable that students have to go into a lifetime of debt just to get an education? Is it reasonable? that they can trick people into losing their home? No! And now, go to the home, to the issue Cameron is hoping to remedy. Is it reasonable that people who've lost their homes have to hide in the shadow where it's dirty and dangerous? No! No! Is it reasonable to expect people who are hurting or homeless to simply vanish from our sight? Is it reasonable to expect us to tolerate this madness? No! And so, when we hear that Cameron Whitney isn't being reasonable, it makes me stop and wonder about how reasonable we are being. If we tolerate all the horrific things unfolding in this country, if we see our futures evaporating before our very eyes, is it reasonable for Cameron to put his body on the line to stop this madness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Cameron is showing us all what must be done. Collectively, we must say no to the madness and yes to peaceful resistance. And that's what Cameron's doing. He's using his one small and shrinking body to say no to the madness. Like many of you, I'm worried about Cameron's health. But unlike you, I think we've got some celebrating to do today. Oh. Cameron has showed us what one person with a good solid base of supporters can do. Cameron has also nurtured my faith that Portland will lead the nation in saying no the unchecked grief. Yeah. And saying yes to rebuilding the house. So I want to close by asking me one question. You may be surprised to hear none of you ask you, but do you tell me what the market will look like? Thank you, I love that. It's a bit older than my eldest child. And I instantly recognized a friend who shared my passion about our state of society. And Cameron and I have been supporting one another in our quest to get the message out. The message is that homelessness is and will be the greatest metaphor for our failure as a species. City Council thinks this will go away. 
They are hoping that these irritating political activists will get tired and fade away. But they're wrong. They have no vision. City Council, like our American Congress, is living in an old system that will not carry us into the future. Shelter is a right. Shelter is a right. Being able to put a tent up over your head in the poor weather is a human right. Using your private property in a non-mutant manner to support other human beings is a right. Your first service is to the people. I'm very really saddened by the lack of dialogue, creativity, or vision that City Council has presented to carry in these 50 days of walking this park. When you are a public servant, you are obligated to enter into the conversation. When you are a public servant, you are responsible to the people, for the people. Even though you may not have a lot to do. Public servant means just that. Serving the public. The investigation of Karen and Martin with Hoffman on 60 days of holding free
the hard part is every day uh, taking like it might go five days a week two days without food it's not easy but i would just like to share that you know it is possible to you know round down the support to people that uh, actually need the support um if you guys want to talk to me a little bit more about um the experience i'm going to share i'm going to share if you want to pull me aside i can do that thank you Hey everybody, I'm Charlie Hill. Thanks for being here today. Hey, I need to first of all, before I even start speaking, uh, I want to say that my colleague and friend Jefferson Smith is here. You're going to hear from him in a minute. I think it's great that the two people that are running for mayor of the city, me and my colleague Jefferson, are both here in solidarity for you. And that's great. So, good to have you here. And you've heard from a lot of great speakers, and we have more coming, so I just want to say three things. I want to give a shout out in love and I want to give a shout out in praise and I want to call to action. First, in love. Cameron, you know a lot of people in this community that care about you and love you. And we want you to be strong and healthy and a warrior for this call has been like this and for a long time. So take care of yourself so you can take care of others. Yep. Please. For all of us who care about you. We care about this guy, don't we? Yeah. Secondly, I'm going to talk about how we can do better. But I want to praise good work. We've heard from some nonprofits here already today that are doing great things. And there are others. There's Outside In. There's Join. There's Care. There's Sisters of the Road. There's the Buck Clark Times. There's a lot of good work being done in this community by people that, that work hard and care, and we should say thank you to them. So thanks for good work so far. I'm not done yet, but thank you for good work so far. And then finally, what we're doing here today, and it needs to be done, is constantly call our community to action. 1,700 people will sleep on the streets of Portland tonight. Can we do better than that? Yeah. Must we do better than that? Yeah. Will we do better than that? Yeah. Thank you. With your help, we will. Thanks very much. It may not 
be a permanent solution. But if you see us here along 4th Avenue, then sitting in the light, where it is safe, instead of being separated and thrown to the side like cockroaches into crack alleys, these are families, these are human beings. We're going to be out there, and you as a community can help us. You can come in if you see it's messy. Help us because those are wet blankets of white messy. Dirty parts look messy. Help us. OccupyPortland.org has a button on the left that says digital. That takes to a replay page, which is also an information page. We can watch our David Love video about the vigil, about Cameron, about this demonstration. You can you can find email, you can find Vigil TV. Vigil TV is where I interview people who are houseless and people standing by their side. And you can hear for yourself how close we are as individuals. How two heads set the way and some bad luck to rip landing right into the street. People who have gotten homeless because they tried to go to school and financial aid made a mistake. Just imagine that. So, these cars here are what we have been using in storage to park. But the community is helping us with blanket washing. We are providing food and we're taking care of one another. And we demand that right until the city can do something. This is an emergency measure. That's what this is, emergency yeah. relief, but it's a community solution. And so when Cameron Whitten talks about the stakeholders being at the table, it doesn't take $400,000 to make one unit of housing. Where is that money going? Well, it's not going to happen if you have houseless people who are making these decisions about how many to spend. There's going to be no more waste. This has got to stop now. So City Hall admits its failure and allow us to work as a community. Theater, I mean, for a movie, too. We get parking spaces for dumpsters for businesses. This is a monument. This is our freedom of speech. We want one parking space. Oh, yeah. And this is to feed and give blankets. But don't forget, these are demonstrators standing up for their own rights, taking care of themselves, showing city hall how it's done. And we need your help. OccupyPortland.org, the visual button. Thank you, Cameron Whitney. First of all, we the people in the United States and all its territories. My name is Jerry at Line C. If you don't know me, you can get my email. We send out thousands of emails for the last three years fighting one major problem. 21st century policing in a capsule is kill at will without due without talk. <laughs> this is the only state in the nation with a law that changes not only policing as we know it today, but for the future. I will tell appointed. I am the founder and the fear person for a group of a long name we call United States Police slash Oregon State Police Independent Citizen a law with the title of Senate Bill 111, police use of deadly physical force. We have a five master plan. One of them, right on the head of it, to make you understand the depth of it, in, when this goes into use, it has now only because of the very top police officials, not just here in Oregon, but federal, in Washington, D.C., picture this, a big, sexy, senior setting, where an officer starts to beat and kick 
the death of a sane person, our law says you, a police officer must stop immediately, arrest that officer, and let him go to prison by a federal jury, a full jury, not a grand jury, because a grand jury is only grand for police officers. We have four other aspects of it for accountability. Our organization will monitor the thing. There is not one other. Anything like that in the nation where it actually has specific procedures. It has specific training that we're going to monitor. We have five members in the group and three on reserve. If you want to get on the street to help out, all you have to do is keep them on your contact with police chief here that called Charlie Hayes just told me five minutes ago that he took he completely the first cell program and he will fire the police chief free if he does not put that program in the yeah. 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 Listen please on his competition, Jefferson Smith comes up here to talk today in a few moments. If he does not say the same thing that Charlie Hayes has, you know who the next player to do. Talk to you on how to do that. Deeply important the moral tragedy that goes beyond the borders of our city. And I hope that the people who are here are not using this as an opportunity. I'm misusing it as an opportunity. Because I think he ought to eat. I listen all the whole time. And you can yell at me all you like. And I decided to do it because I think there's important things to say, and I think there are important things to hear, even from a politician. But, we had four kids for shooting in the last five nights in our town. We had 12 people killed last night in Colorado. We have deep problems in this country. Deeper than I think any of us are willing to acknowledge and deeper than any of us will be able to accomplish today. And I will hold the police department accountable. And I will make sure we come up with emergency strategies to address people who are helping. And I will look to raise revenue for projects that we have. And I will preserve the fees that we have even when people are more powerful than any of the six people who have yelled over the last five minutes ask me to cut those fees. And I will fight so that we do something about the widest wealth disparities in this country we've had since World War II. But we've got to do something way deeper. And I want to point something to somebody who you ought to be listening to more than you listen to me. And you ought to go to your computer and Google a guy named Richard Wilkinson. I don't even think he's from this country, but he gave a talk about what's happening in the world around wealth disparity and comparing nations based on income inequality. And if you compare nations, if you want to, be, if you want to improve crime rates, if you want to improve homelessness, and by that I mean make it less, if you want to improve economic opportunity and you're an undeveloped nation, the best thing that a nation can do is become a developed one. But if you are a developed nation and you want to make crime and homelessness and heart attacks and poverty a little bit better, a little bit less tragic, the best thing you can do is not become more developed. The best thing you can do is become more equal. The best thing you can do is improve income equality. And if you're wondering why 
There are people sleeping in places because they don't have anywhere else. And they're wondering why we have people shooting each other. When they ought to be shooting each other. You don't need to look too much further to understand that we are dealing with a global and national problem. But if we don't deal with it in our entire lives, we won't be big enough to do it. So let me say something else. I want to talk to the people who aren't yelling and the people who are. And I want to figure out what our ratio is of yelling to voting. Because I was talking to my friend, Teresa Rayford, who was telling me, you know what? Jeff, you're big enough. You should carry Cameron out of here and bring him to a hotel to get him something to eat. Because the people here who care the most will vote police. And so what I'm asking you is if you care, don't vote for me. Charlie's pretty good guy, too. What I ask you is to dedicate more deeply, more deeply than a single rally, more deeply than a sign, more deeply than somebody who's gone 50 days without eating solid food. We want the money back! And the last thing I want to say, and I know the easiest thing for me to do is come and say, I, I can get applause lines, I know how to do that. I just think we need to work a little harder and think a little deeper. And what I like to do is give a round of applause to the people who are working really hard. And thank you for listening for a second. And even thanks for the people who are yelling. Okay. Hello. We just have some things out to you that are little pieces of paper, and that's the court. And you probably keep trying to sing that right now so you can join in with us. Yeah. 